Welcome to this introduction on barium enema examinations and colon anatomy. In all of my talks and presentations which I have given on learning radiographic anatomy, I have been very explicit that we're not trying to make you a radiologist. We just want to show you some normal basic anatomy. So let's start with a barium enema examination. Here and in the prior films I've labeled the appendix and portions of the colon. In this film you can see the appendix and the rectum and several small diverticuli. Interestingly, the colon is very redundant. Again, the appendix is seen and the three-dimensional view of the hepatic flexure can be seen. As we move forward in this oblique view, the hepatic flexure becomes even more prominent. The colon is hardly how it, how it looks in our medical textbooks. The rectum can be seen going posterior and the sigmoid takes a sharp curve. Performing a colonoscopy on some of these patients is very difficult. Not only is the colon long and redundant, but we have to make it through several areas of diverticuli. The barium enema is given, usually dilute barium, by placing a rectal catheter into the uh, anus and then blowing a balloon up to keep the barium in place. Here we see a sigmoid loop which is redundant. This can lead to a volvulus later. This patient has several small diverticuli along the sigmoid colon. Diverticulosis is most common in the sigmoid colon. As we enter these oblique lateral images, we notice how the rectum takes a very sharp turn. Here, the splenic flexure is seen. This is sometimes very difficult to maneuver on colonoscopic exam. This study and all of the prior studies are called double contrast barium enema exams because they are air and barium. A single contrast examination is simply a single column of barium or hypake, H-Y-P-A-Q-U-E, hypake. It's a little different than gastrographin as it's hyperosmolar and can be used not only for diagnosis but therapeutic purposes. In this image, which looks more like a textbook image, we see the entire colon, the appendix, several diverticuli. This is a textbook picture of a colon and note how the hepatic flexure is three-dimensional. The ampulla of the rectum is well distended in this image. Here the patient is lying down with her left side down. This is a decubitus film. Here again the patient is with her left side down. The appendix and the cecum are in the right uh, lower quadrant in the upright position. Notice on this film that even though it's taken in an upright position that there was layering of barium. Go back and look at that for just a second. Here the ampulla of the rectum is again distended and this film is backwards. How can you tell? More images of the same. Notice the sharp angulation of the rectum towards the anus. This helps in maintaining continence. We see some diverticuli in this image. This is a barium enema which I performed on a patient who I attempted a colonoscopy on but because of redundancy of the colon was unable to make it all the way around. Here you'll soon see why. Notice that the cecum which is labeled and the transverse colon are very redundant, especially the transverse colon which dips down below the cecum. There's loss of haustral markings because I've distended the patient with air during the colonoscopy and because of the redundancy of the colon I was unable to make it to the cecum. In this image the cecum actually lies above the transverse colon. If this patient had appendicitis they would have pain in the left upper quadrant of their abdomen. Again the rectum is angulated to help with uh, continents. This image is backwards but the cecum is well distended. I was unable to uh, place the colonoscope into the cecum and after multiple attempts simply gave up and requested a double contrast barium enema. That was a quick introduction. hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions please email me. Thank you.